Clement is considered the first apostolic uh, father uh, of the church and was a leading member of the clergy uh, after St. Peter. Uh, Linus and Cletus, uh, Clement becomes the Pope. This is uh, circa 92 to 100 AD. Uh, his letter to the Corinthians uh, is a very valuable historical document uh, filled with wisdom and paternal guidance. Uh, and it provides the earliest example of the Bishop of Rome, uh, the Pope, uh, his intervention in the affairs of another church. Uh, the letter is one of the oldest surviving Christian documents uh, beside the New Testament, and uh, affirms the apostolic authority of the Roman Church and clergy. Uh, we actually know very few historical details about Clement's life, uh, but his legend uh, tells us a very elaborate story. Uh, Clement is born into a noble Roman family, uh, and uh, he was the cousin of Emperor uh, Domitian. Uh, his father, uh, uh, Faustinius is in fact a Roman senator. Now Domitian uh, rules from around 81 to 96 AD and sees the role of the emperor as one of absolute power. Uh, Dominus et duos, Lord and God. Now Clement uh, becomes an orphan at a very young age. Uh, his mother and his brothers are lost at sea. Uh, and his father disappears while searching for them. Now, 20 years later, Clement becomes a disciple of St. Peter. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the St. Apostle, Peter, uh, miraculously reunites Clement uh, with his entire missing family. Uh, he meets Peter during the Apostles' uh, contest with the wizard uh, Simon Magus. Now, Clement is uh, ordained by St. Peter uh, and acts as a kind of auxiliary bishop to Linnaeus and uh, Anaceltus. And he is a witness to St. Peter's crucifixion in Rome by Nero, uh, circa 64 AD. Clement has prestige and power as the bishop of the uh, early Christian church in Rome. And his activities soon rouse the ire of the civic authorities. Uh, a large congregation, a large Christian congregation already exists in Rome at this time. Uh, a mob is stirred up against Clement, and he is captured and brought up to the prefect for trial. Uh, Clement, of course, remains calm and speaks his mind. Uh, he calls the riot and the people who participated in it, a farce, uh, stirred up by ignorant men, and shows that it has nothing behind it. Now, Clement wins the argument with the prefect, uh, and his life is spared, but he is banished from Rome and sent to the uh, marble uh, quarries in, uh, oh, uh, Chesiphorus, I believe it is, in the uh, Crimea region. Uh, Clement, upon arrival at the quarry, uh, tells his fellow prisoners that the Lord has sent him uh, to be the chief jewel in, the, uh, in their crown of martyrdom. And he sets up a ministry uh, for the condemned men. Now, lack of water is a serious problem in the quarry. Uh, and uh, the life-giving liquid has to be carried uh, six miles. And, well, men are dying of thirst. Uh, Clement tells his fellow prisoners to pray uh, to the Lord Christ. Uh, Clement kneels down in prayer, uh, and while he's praying, he sees a lamb on a hill and understands that this lamb is Christ, personified. He goes to where the lamb had stood and strikes the ground with his pickaxe. Uh, now, there's a variation in, uh, in this. In some tellings of the legend, Clement uses his wooden staff. Now, either way, instantly, a stream of clear, gushing water springs up from the ground. Now, this miracle uh, results in the conversion of a large number of the local pagans, as well as his fellow prisoners. Uh, all are amazed by the miracle of the gushing water. Uh, Clement's fame quickly spreads and people come from far and wide to be baptized. Now, within a year of Clement's captivity, 
75 churches are established by him in the Crimea region. Uh, the Roman authorities cannot tolerate mass defection uh, from their own gods, and soldiers are sent to restore order. Now, the commander, rather than decimate or destroy an entire good workforce, settles for one man, Clement. Clement is thrown into the Black Sea with an anchor tied around his neck. Uh, his disciples pray, uh, and the waters are miraculously thrown back. A uh, vast crowd walks into the seabed. Uh, they find the body of Clement lying peacefully uh, beside a divinely built stone shrine uh, that has already been prepared for him by God uh, in order to contain his remains. Now, for many years, on the date of Clement's death, the waters of the Black Sea would again recede for seven days in order to reveal his shrine. Now, years later, a pilgrim forgets her child and panics as the inrushing waters begin to engulf her. Uh, her baby uh, was lying peacefully asleep at the shrine. Now, for an entire year, the woman prays and mourns. The next feast day of St. Clement, the woman is first to the shrine and kneels in prayer. Uh, when she rises up, she finds her baby, her son, asleep where she had left him. Now the waters, over time, stopped receding because the people lapsed in their faith and returned to sin. Now Clement was executed during the reign of Emperor Trajan. Uh, this is circa 101 AD. Now Trajan, uh, the Emperor Trajan, rules from around 98 to 117 AD and uh, is in fact one of the greatest and most renowned Roman emperors ever. Uh, Trajan was born in Spain and was the first emperor of non-Italian origin. Uh, Spain at this time is a Roman province known as Hispania. Uh, he was a very capable ruler uh, and uh, actually provided for the poor citizens of Rome. Uh, he sets up a special imperial fund that lasts for centuries. Uh, he's, he restores the road systems of Italy uh, and establishes a good government uh, administration. Uh, Trajan is a military man. He's very macho. Uh, he likes battle. He likes war. Uh, and he pushes the frontiers of the empire to its limits. Uh, now, he also has a fondness for wine uh, and likes young boys uh, for sexual purposes. But, uh, his reputation and fame as a model ruler has lived down the centuries. Uh, Trajan was actually very reluctant to put Christians to death. Uh, but St. Clement uh, had simply gone too far. Uh, Clement, as I mentioned, uh, is a, was a great writer. And his writings are very important. Uh, his writings feature an emphasis on Christ uh, as a true prophet and messiah. Uh, and his writings are essentially a framework uh, for theological discourses on very early Christianity. Now, in the 9th century A.D., around 869, uh, St. Cyril uh, brings Clement's bones back to Rome. Uh, he finds them buried. Uh, he finds a body buried with an anchor on dry, on dry land. Uh, Clement's remains are enshrined at the Basilica of St. Clement. Uh, now, excavations in Rome have provided some evidence that the Church of St. Clement uh, may have been built on the, uh, on the site of his own house. Now, uh, Inker, uh, I believe it's called Inkerman, yeah, Inkerman Cave uh, Monastery uh, in the Crimea also claims to be the place of his uh, original burial. Uh, and some other relics, allegedly his head, uh, reside at the Kiev Monastery in the Ukraine. Now, in art, St. Clement is usually portrayed with an anchor at his side. Uh, he uh, wears papal vestments, the symbols of his office, uh, and holds the papal cross and the keys to heaven. Uh, he is often uh, portrayed near a fountain or spring. 
uh, or lying down in a temple in the Black Sea. Uh, now, the Anchor Cross, the Mariner's Cross, is also known as the Cross of St. Clement. Now, Clement is a saint, not only in the Roman Catholic Church, but also in the Greek and Russian Orthodox Churches, uh, the Syrian and Coptic Churches, as well as the Angelican and Lutheran Churches, uh, who celebrate his feast day. Now, his feast day is on November 23rd, or November 24th, uh, depending on which church uh, you're in or which uh, church is celebrating. Clement is the patron saint of blacksmiths, stone cutters, shoe tanners, and lighthouse keepers. All right, uh, what a great legend. All right, with that thought, we're going to take uh, another musical break. Uh, when we return, uh, we're going to examine...